Their plan is to use freedom of speech to deny people freedom of speech. Make that make sense. Hello, and welcome to the Politics Girl podcast. I'm your host, Lee McGowan. Let's get into it. First of all, Happy New Year. It's 2024, the year we either destroy or save America. There's no middle ground here. It's a make it or break it year for the country that we know and love. To give us a sense of what we have ahead of us here at the top of 2024, I'm joined by journalist Ahmed Baba. Ahmed is a columnist for The Independent, consultant for Our Common Power, and co-founder of Rant Media. Entrepreneur and media literacy consultant, his work has been seen in The New York Times, Washington Post, BBC, CBS, and Rolling Stone. His newsletter, AhmedBaba.News, can be found on Substack, where he does a deep dive into a cross-section of topics. I'm having Ahmed on today because in November, he wrote an amazing article in The Independent about Project 2025. If you don't know what Project 2025 is, it's a roadmap to fundamentally reshape the federal government into the image of the far right when a Republican president takes office on January 20th, 2025. We keep talking about the horse race, the odds, who's going to win, Biden or Trump, but we're not really talking about what's at stake in this election, the real decision we have to make. The consequences for the rule of law, democracy, and justice in America are all on the line. It's not really about the candidates. It's about the future of our country as we know it, and we have to take that incredibly seriously. So here we sit at the top of 2024, and I want you to know how essential it is that we see what's on the line if we elect anyone who will implement Project 2025. And so far, that's almost every single Republican candidate. So without further ado, please welcome my guest, journalist, entrepreneur, and columnist for The Independent, Ahmed Baba. Welcome, Ahmed. Thank you for having me. I'm a huge fan, so excited for the conversation. Ugh. Well, you're welcome. First show of 2024. Thank you for coming. I mean, as we head into this kind of make it or break it year, I really wanted people to understand how important these 12 months are going to be to the future of our nation. And I don't think anything drives home the importance of 2024 more than the details around Project 2025. So thank you for coming today to talk to me about this incredibly dystopian future that has literally been written down for us as the Republican plan if they regain the power of the presidency and, God forbid, the entire federal government. Yeah, um, super lighthearted stuff to start the year on. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, happy to be here to talk about it because it's I'm still it's still unbelievable that they actually wrote it down Yeah. Uh, on paper. Yeah. That's part I'm still stunned. By. I know. It is stunning, isn't it? I often think of... Mein Kampf. It keeps coming back to Mein Kampf in my head. I'm like, you know, when Hitler wrote down everything he was planning to do, he put it in black and white. And either people didn't read it or they didn't take it seriously. And in this case, we have both read it and we have to take it incredibly seriously before anyone implements it. And then we say, what happened? We didn't know. Exactly. Yeah. And the right people took it seriously. His base took it seriously. Correct. And that's what's happening. Correct. Here. Now, People may not have heard of Project 2025, so if they haven't or if they have, um, as you've said in your own newsletter, if this is the first time you're hearing about it, brace yourself. So, yeah. Ahmed, what is Project 2025? Where do I even start? So uh, I, I would take it from the broad strokes that it is essentially an authoritarian playbook that gives instructions for the next Republican president on exactly how they can twist the federal government into an arm of the far right. And it essentially starts with this executive order known as Schedule F, which Trump tried to utilize at the end of uh, his presidency, where it strips civil service protections from tens of thousands of federal workers. And then they plan to replace them with an army, that's, that's their wording, not mine, an army of GOP loyalists that will then fill the federal bureaucracy and inflict their will without pushback on the American people. And it sounds hyperbolic, but I promise you, that they, you know, uh, for people who don't know about it, it it's, it's, it's really written in, in black and white right there. As you said it so succinctly in your writing, Project 2025, which is also called the conservative promise, is an authoritarian manifesto. It's not just a list of stated yeah. ideals. It's a detailed strategic playbook to outline exactly how to destroy the federal government as we know it. And 
like you said, we're not being hyperbolic. Uh, so before we go any further, I want to be really clear that speaking in extremes like destroying the federal government as we know it is exactly right. These guys plan to truly burn down the house with all of us in it and build their preferred version of society on kind of the ashes of American democracy. And we can't be mincing words when we talk about it. And as you said, along with having just a ridiculous amount of absolutely shocking policy plans, which you and I will get into in a minute, it instructs the future GOP president to start their term by firing tens of thousands of federal employees and replacing them with, like you said, an army of Republican loyalists. So we are talking about people that are career public servants, people who do their job regardless of who the president is, who stay from administration to administration and they keep the lights on and the department's running. All these jobs are on the chopping block because the goal is to have no one in a position of any power or authority that isn't 100% loyal to this Republican agenda or in Donald Trump's case, him. Um, and they also plan to consolidate the power of the executive branch of the government around the president, making every federal agency answerable to the president. Something that we, we need to be very clear, we do not have now, which is why no matter what you hear from the Republicans, the DOJ can go and indict a sitting president's son with no outside interference because these are separated powers right now. What the Republicans want to do is what they say we already have, which we don't, is to have the president dictate things like the Department of Justice. And that is the sort of goal of Project 2025. It is to dismantle the government, all the checks and balances, the co-equal branches of power, so that the far right can effectively enact this extremist agenda without interference. So let me just ask you, Ahmed, uh, who wrote Project 2025? Like, whose brainchild is it? Because if our courts were corrupted by Leonard Leo and the Federalist Society and our elections and politicians were corrupted by Citizens United decision and, say, the Koch Foundation and people like Harlan Crow, who came up with this monstrosity? Well, first off, I just got to say you, you eloquently summarized all of the facets of it. So I'm just going to. I did that there. based on your writing did, fundamentally. Did, did, I'm going to say you are an excellent writer. <laughs> did my job for me. Thank you. Thank you. So basically, this is the Heritage Foundation, which is familiar to a lot of people, right? And they've partnered with 70 plus writing organizations. You, you name them, right? Like they're in there. Moms for Liberty is in there. Um, Turning Point USA is in there. They have essentially assembled, you know, the authoritarian Avengers here to come and like, figure out a way to implement their agenda. So we've got the Heritage Foundation, which has been doing this for decades. And in 1981, Reagan uh, implemented 60% of the Heritage Foundation's inaugural mandate for leadership, right? So they got pretty, pretty involved for a very long time. And interesting enough, if you read the Washington Post article on that, on the, like, the Heritage Foundation scoring of Reagan's administration, they talk about how they were disappointed that he didn't fill enough political appointees. So they've been thinking about this for decades. So it's really been from conservative administration to conservative administration. They've been here. This think tank has been creating so many policy positions and instructing every Republican administration on what to do. The reason why this is going down the way it is, uh, believe it or not, like they were caught flat footed by Trump's win. Uh, the, the right the right was not prepared strategically for what exactly they were going to do. And Trump had no idea how government worked. You know, they had Steve Bannon writing EOs. Like, come on, they, they didn't know what they were doing. So what they're trying to do this time is have this playbook, have this army of loyalists that they're already training currently and screening ideologically prepped for day one so Trump can go ahead, issue that executive order, purge civil servants, that traditionally had pushed back on his insanity and then install all of these loyalists and begin implementing a vetted and long sought strategy that they've been planning for a very long time. And they're going to try to basically do, if you thought the first term was wild, that was Trump constrained. This is them trying to do Trump unleashed and whoever wins, which would likely be Trump in the nominee. But it's really been a methodical 920 page manifesto that is outlining exactly what they want to do with so much right wing buy in. Yeah. I mean, I think the thing is, is that 
this group of people is incredibly good at long-term strategic planning. It is something that the Democrats are not good at. It's why Roe was overturned. This is That was a 40-year plan to get what they wanted, and they succeeded at it. It was a 40-year plan to take over our courts, and they succeeded at it. Uh, we had talking about the Powell memo when we had Robert Reich on the show recently, and it's like, that's a 40, 50-year plan to get those courts working for the corporation. So like these people know how to long-term plan. And like you said... Donald Trump was blundering around when he was in power. You know, when he was elected in 2016, it's quite clear no one was prepared. No one knew where the lights are, basically. But this is a different time and a very organized and very well-funded uh, Heritage Foundation and its partners who want to avoid that chaos from the early Trump years and be far more effective at kind of sweeping in change. I mean, I keep thinking about the first Muslim ban, right? It was overturned pretty fast because it was written so badly, right? It was so easy for the courts to overturn it. What they're trying to do is have the opposite of that. You know, it was incompetent under the first Trump leadership. They want to do this where they can inflict their will on the American people in a way that is very, very few legal challenges to it. I mean, the plan is so extreme and it, it actually feels quite shocking when you start to read about it. But it's even scarier when you think that it's been written by people who truly understand government, who know how it works, who have all the intentions of following through with these plans, because that's the part that should really terrify people. I mean, Donald Trump can say whatever he wants, but he's not the one organizing this. This is smart, organized people that are organizing this. And if you look at the specifics, you start to feel like, oh my God, the country is going to implode. So why don't we talk a little bit about some of the key points that you think the audience should be aware of so they understand the details details of this plan and what really could be implemented by people who absolutely know what they're doing. Yeah. So those are all excellent points. You know, these are people who have spent decades learning the, the machinery of government and they know exactly what loopholes to use. They know exactly what laws, uh, you know, give the executive branch certain authorities and they want to exploit it to the fullest extent. And what they're really doing is bringing the culture wars into the executive branch. So some of the first things they want to do is like eliminate the wording, the word gender, and you know, all, like all these LGBTQ protections. They want to edit Title Seven. You can't no longer discriminate on sex as it stands currently, right? Or sexuality, or gender. They want to eliminate that just because they have this this really big anti-transgender agenda. Anti-transgender, anti-gay, anti-woke. I mean, all this stuff. I mean, Project 2025 comes in hard for DEI initiatives, right? In all government departments. And it clearly ends all LGBTQ plus protections in America. I mean, this is a long-term Heritage Foundation and Christian nationalist goal. I mean, we have to be really clear about that. The fact that all federal protections for the LGBT community um, will be removed. That abolishing them is a key aspect of this plan. And it's right in line with the new Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson's talk about homosexuality being deviant and how it should be punishable by law. So we're not just talking about things like getting rid of gay marriage when you say what you're saying. We're talking about throwing gay people in jail, making it illegal to be gay. And like you said, eroding Title VII protections and allowing employers to openly discriminate against people. Exactly. That should outrage people. Yeah, it should. And then they want to do things like erode, uh, basically empower under religious exemptions, the ability to discriminate. So they want to just roll back, turn back time. And I'm glad you mentioned Mike Johnson because he fits, this was dropped before he was even speaker, but he fits so perfectly within this agenda because a lot of this takes Congress too, some of it. Some of the stuff outside of the federal the executive branch will take some congressional cooperation. And if you have a Mike Johnson, the speaker, some of that's going to come through. And bigger picture too, I think it's important to talk about just the outright dismantling of federal agencies. So they want to just take down the Department of Education totally, right? Which is something um, Vivek Ramaswamy, uh, the, the totally likable GOP candidate who's uh, out there just, just being totally unhinged. He's called for this. Trump has called for this. Um, DeSantis has called for this. They want to go agency by agency and really inflict, take all of the rhetorical uh, culture war rhetoric that they've done. They want to take that and put it into policy, into executive action. They want to make sure that every single state can just basically do revisionist history 
on American history, which is really kind of contesting some of the media literacy progress that's been kind of quietly made over the last few years. They want to then now undo that, right? And they want to essentially, they know an educated population votes against the GOP. Uh, so they, that's essentially the bottom line there. So that's just one, and that doesn't even talk about the DOJ or the FBI that they want to totally yeah, dismantle. Yeah, let's, let's talk about that. I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, Project 2025 has the next Republican president defunding the Department of Justice and taking control of our system of law. They want to completely dismantle the FBI and break up the Department of Homeland Security, the Department of Education, the Department of Commerce, and the Department of Health and Human Services. The the project has the White House taking full control over agencies like the FCC, which is the Federal Communications Commission, and the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission. So we should note here that one of the first things an authoritarian leader always does is to take control of the media, which is clearly part of the agreed upon plan here. And they also want to take care of businesses. So remember Ron DeSantis's fight with Disney. What if the government had the power to strip Disney of their business licenses if they didn't go along with their politics? And that's what we're looking at here. So you want to do business in Project 2025 America? You're going to toe the right wing party line. You want a broadcast license? You're going to say what we want you to say. This is kind of North Korea RT styles, just Fox News all day, every day. So if you want to compete in this network and in this media environment and in this business environment, then you tow the Republican Party line all the way down. And, and to be very clear, this is the opposite of the party that was free speech and letting the market decide. This is polar opposite stuff. Let's talk a little bit about what they want to do to poor environmental protections. Yeah, I mean, just quickly, like so much for free market uh, uh, capitalism, yeah. conservatism, right? Like just... You know, DeSantis has already killed that, but that's that's a really good point to tie in that just briefly, like on the the fact that they're really taking, like with the FCC especially, and network televisions, it matches up with what Trump's threats with MSNBC. They're they're creating mechanisms to enforce the threats. It's not just rhetorical threats anymore. With the environmental protections, the EPA is mentioned in the manifesto ninety times. Ninety they, times, at, at least from what I could find. <laughs> And like, and that's, you know, that's like 10% of the, you know, of the 920 uh, page document. And essentially they want to go through, they call it environmental extremism. This is the most anti-climate change, um, you know, progress plan you could potentially create. If you were to think I'm going to create a fossil fuel lobbied playbook, that's what this is. You know, so if you're a young person that cares about the environment, it's, it's not going to go your way uh, if, if, if Republicans get elected because they essentially want to finish what Trump had done. Because when Trump was in office, he had rolled back around 100 environmental regulations. He did not make any progress. Biden came, rolled all those back, went ahead, input, you know, the Inflation Reduction Act, you know, the infrastructure bill. He did historic investments in climate and they want to come in and essentially they're all talking about their energy refinements and, and how they want to just drill, drill, drill. That goes to what Trump said on day one. He said he wants to be a dictator for one day uh, because dictatorships, you know, traditionally last only 24 hours, uh, as we know. <laughs> and uh, then he said one of the reasons why is because he wants to drill, drill, drill. And, you know, that's really important because if you look at just the planning and everything, there's so much fossil fuel industry stuff driving so much of what Republicans are doing right now. It's, it's unbelievable. And I think anyone who cares about climate change should just go nowhere near any of the Republican candidates, because this is not just Donald. Like, even if Nikki Haley were to somehow pull off a, a Houdini, um, you know, ma magical thing here and won the nomination, she would still be enforcing this agenda. So this environmental part is just clearly a direct giveaway to the corporate donors that fund these organizations that wrote this policy. I mean, they don't care about our water or our air. They don't give a shit if they poison the earth or we all get cancer. They care about maximizing corporate profits and having to dispose of their disgusting refuse in a responsible way cuts into their bottom line. So forget it, it's gone, right? And as you noted, the EPA is uh, mentioned 90 times in Project 2025. So like... 
This is all about getting rid of what stands in their way and stands in their way of money. And I, I think here's the thing. Everything in this plan comes down to money or control. The environmental stuff just happens to come down to money. But the a lot of the rest of it is about a control. And I should note that Trump, who is the very clear front runner for the Republican nomination, is on board for all of this. But like you said, so are all the other candidates. But for Trump, particularly, this is about punishing critics and his opponents using the Justice Department, using the Insurrection Act, using the military, using special counsels, all in service to him, answerable to him. It will be about retribution and revenge, and the conservative powers that be are going to allow him to happen. I mean, we already see what this same group is doing with our abortion rights across the country. But Project 2025 includes prosecutions of anybody who distributes abortion pills by mail, which is essentially a backdoor into a national ban. They're also proposing this. I mean, look at what Ken Paxton did in Texas in December. This isn't about life. It's about domination. It's about religion. And it's about control, which, again, brings me back to religion, right? Project 2025 not surprisingly, provides huge protections for religious people. So while sex and sexual discrimination will be allowed, uh, they argue that Democrats and previous governments have been openly hostile to people with traditional beliefs about marriage and gender and sexuality, and this new administration will enact policies that will respect religious exercise in the workplace and under the First Amendment. It also goes further to make rep recommendations to implement so-called Christian biblical based ideologies, right? To reform everything from education to voting rights to immigration. They want us to have Christian based everything, despite the fact that the First Amendment says Congress shall make no laws representing an establishment of religion. And then, of course, there is this thought police stuff, which you mentioned before, right? Right. Project 2025 calls for, and I'm going to directly quote this, the next conservative president to make the institutions of American civil society hard targets for woke culture warriors. And that starts with deleting the following terms from every federal rule, agency regulation, contract, grant, and every piece of legislation that exists. So to be clear, they want these words gone from everything. The terms to be deleted include sexual orientation, gender identity, diversity, equity, and inclusion, gender itself, gender equality, gender equity, gender awareness, gender sensitive, abortion, reproductive health, reproductive rights, and any other term used to, quote, deprive Americans of their First Amendment rights. So these people not only want to roll back protections, they want to eliminate the words we use to describe the protections. So their plan is to use freedom of speech to deny people freedom of speech. Make that make sense. If I asked you how many subscriptions you have right now, would you be able to list them and tell me how much each one cost? Many of us think we could, but I'll tell you, Many of us are wrong. It's amazing how many subscriptions we have that we don't even know about, which means it's amazing how much money we're paying without awareness. That's why Rocket Money is so helpful. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills. It shows you all your subscriptions in one place, and if there's something you don't want or can no longer afford, then you can cancel it with just a tap. Rocket Money will even try and negotiate for you to get a refund in the last couple of months or to lower that bill for you. All you have to do is take a picture of the bill in question and Rocket Money will do the rest. It's a great service, which is probably why Rocket Money has over 5 million users. In fact, Rocket Money has helped its members save an average of $720 a year with over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. You could use Rocket Money to cancel a subscription you don't want to maybe sign up for a subscription you do, like say a Politics Girl subscription. It will help you save money and you will have a better service. We never want someone having subscriptions they can no longer afford or they aren't using. That's why it's wonderful to have an app that will make it easy on themselves if they have to leave. So stop wasting money on things you don't use and cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash politics girl. Maybe you'll have a little extra money to spend somewhere else. That's rocketmoney.com slash politics girl. Rocketmoney.com slash politics girl. So we're top of the year. 
And I don't know about you, but I want to be top of my mental game in 2024. But I know it doesn't matter what our New Year's resolutions are. It is often a struggle to find a healthy and convenient snack that doesn't have all the sugar and junk, especially when we're super busy which is why I'm so pleased to be telling you about Mosh Protein Bars. Mosh is a protein bar made for your brain. It supports brain health with ingredients like lion's mane, collagen, and omega-3s, but it also has 12 grams of protein, only 160 calories, and one gram of sugar. Our brains are our number one tool, which is why Mosh Bars were mindfully formulated by some of the top neuroscientists and functional nutritionists. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'm not really a protein bar person. It's a texture thing for me, but I don't find that with Mosh. I actually really like their lemon and white chocolate bar. The flavor is delicious and the texture isn't that weird protein texture that they leave a film on your tongue. Plus, Mosh Bars are a product with a purpose. Founded by Patrick Schwarzenegger and his mother, Maria Shriver, Mosh is a mission-driven brain health and wellness company that donates a portion of all proceeds to support women's brain research through the Women's Alzheimer's Movement at the Cleveland Clinic. So don't settle for some mediocre snack when you can nourish your body and mind with the fuel it needs to succeed. Whether you're at the gym, on the go, or just living your best life, Mosh Protein Bars will keep your brain and body fit, fueled, and feeling good going into the new year. Head to moshlife.com slash politicsgirl to save 20% off plus free shipping on your first six count trial pack. That's 20% off plus free shipping on your first six count trial pack, which includes all of their delicious flavors. Again, my personal fave, lemon white chocolate. That's M-O-S-H-L-I-F-E dot com slash politicsgirl. Thank you, Mosh Bars, for continuing to sponsor the Politics Girl podcast. So their plan is to use freedom of speech to deny people freedom of speech. Make that make sense. It does not make any sense. It's, it's unbelievably hypocritical. And it's incredibly Orwellian. You know, I heard you, yes. you, know, you were talking about the or- Orwell book in the, in the disinformation podcast episode you did. It's this tried and true authoritarian tactic. They use, they say they're protecting rights. They say they're protecting democracy while actively destroying it. For you to say you're going to protect the First Amendment in the same sentence you're saying you're deleting terms like sexual orientation, like you're not deleting some some wildly offensive terms or like, you know, something that just shouldn't be used anymore, like the N word for something, you know, this isn't like in the name of progress. This is <laughs> you're essentially saying like you want to it, and it's unbelievable the words they've chosen. It just shows how far and extreme the Republican Party has gone that they, they sat in a room looked each other in the eye, wrote it down, and we're like, this is great. Let's just release this, you know, let's put this on a website. And not only that, let's talk to Politico about it. Let's talk to these orgs about it. They're so, their arrogance, which I personally believe will be their downfall on this, is because in December, this Washington Post article essentially cited a, a source that said Susie Wiles of the Trump campaign has reached out directly to the director of Project 2025, Paul Dans, and told them, simmer down a little bit. You know, like, don't push the rhetoric as forcefully, because uh, it turns out being compared to uh, fascist dictator of the 20th century isn't positive press. Uh, I don't think the Trump campaign and Stephen Miller seem to believe it was for a short period of time there, but it seems that they're kind of recognizing that they, they really overreached. And that's the one thing you can, why I still have optimism and hope that uh, Trump will lose, is that the man self-sabotages. And by you know, believing you can put and say all of these anti-LGBTQ initiatives, you can be so overtly anti-climate, you can say you're going to destroy the Department of Education, you can say you're going to defund and then absolutely just control, delete the FBI. I don't even know what that means. What do, who's going to oversee those investigations? To say you're going to do these things while also essentially having the front runner on track to having to pardon himself along with all of these first day initiatives. You're just and openly saying he wants to be a dictator for that day. It's and then detain millions of immigrants in camps and articulating that the same weekend you're giving a speech about vermin. I mean, I'm just just saying all of this out loud. It's kind of Well, you know, that's the thing though. I mean, Ahmed, that's the thing. They're not it's not that they're changing the policies. It's not that they think they've gone too far. What they're saying is stop saying it. 
because people like you and I are talking about it. We're saying, yo, they wrote this down. They want to get rid of words in the Department of Education, the Department of Justice, and they want to get this. They don't want us to be gay. They don't want us to have contraception. They want us to be baby makers in the home. We're trying to say, look, they wrote it all down. And they're saying, could you just be a little quieter about it? Uh, don't talk about it. We still want all these things, but just don't talk about it. And I want to add one last policy thing so people really get it in their heads. I should note that Project 2025 also plans to criminalize porn. In fact, their stance on pornography is very <laughs> extreme. The bottom line being that pornography should be absolutely outlawed in America. The people who produce and distribute pornography should be in prison. Educators and public librarians who, quote, supply it should have their institutions closed and those people should be registered as sex offenders. So explain to me how you give a kid Lolita, the book, which was in everyone's like, you know, reading list back in the day. Now you're a sex offender to give them that. Telecommunications and technology firms that facilitate the spread of what is deemed pornography should also be closed. So see you later, Netflix. You're gone if Big Mouth is on the air. HBO, you're done. Showtime can hit the road if they put like Outlander series on the air. That Those people are now considered peddlers of filth in Project 2025's Christo Fascist America. And I want to be really clear that this is the kind of extremism that these people are doing in the land that we call freedom. Uh, you know, the land of freedom. This is the kind of anti-freedom stuff that these people are doing. You brought up a good point about Lolita, these books, right? They're calling books that have any explicit details, they're calling that porn. If you're saying institutions that spread what you deem is porn, to be shut down, you can you can just at whim if you have that power. I mean, what every library in America, what any public school you don't like, like there's and that's just and then that goes to, you know, transitions over to the unitary executive theory because that's what that's what they're basing all of this power on. So, unitary executive theory is essentially this theory, this uh, you know, centuries long conservative theory, essentially that Article Two of the Constitution gives the president the ability to do whatever they want, or as Nixon says. If I do it, then it is not illegal. Or Trump, who calls himself the chosen one and talking about how he can do whatever he wants with Article 2. And we saw Barr use this theory when he issued his Mueller report this of is, rebuttal. This is or, Trump's AG, Bill Barr. Yes. Trump, uh, ter, uh, former Attorney General Bill Barr used the, this theory in his memo that he essentially used to gaslight the public about Mueller's findings arguing us that Trump effectively couldn't obstruct justice based off, off this theory. And they're relying on Hamilton's unitary executive theory in, in Federalist 65, but they're perverting it. Because if you actually read it, Hamilton says the president can be prosecuted, can be impeached, can be held accountable. So we have this unitary executive theory that was also pushed um, you know, during the, the, the Bush years to justify torch, to justify so many heinous authoritarian acts, and they're using it now again to justify their plans for Project 2025 and the potential second term of Trump. They're using it in Trump's court cases right now to claim vast presidential immunity that doesn't exist, that therefore, if he tried to overthrow the government, but he had the title of president, he's immune from all prosecution. Yeah, because overthrowing the government is part of his official duties. Yeah, of course. That's written in <laughs> sentence one of the Constitution. Uh, <laughs> the president shall stay in power as long as he wants, because when the president does it, it's not illegal. Exactly. That's, That's not written we down. all learn about. We learn about this in first grade. I don't know why anyone thinks. I really, actually, I really want to be clear about that, because as someone who studies American history and our government, this isn't at all what the framers had in mind. In fact, our entire system of government was set up in opposition to a monarchy. The reason we have a constitution and a representational government and the separation of powers is so no one person would ever have that much power again. There's a reason we have checks and balances built into our system. It was for the express purpose of making sure we wouldn't end up with a top-down aristocratic or dictatorial rule. Like that was the point, right? And here we are talking about Project 2025, giving the executive branch of our government unprecedented power with the president in charge of it all. Checks and balances would basically cease to exist in America. The power of the federal government would be 
consolidated into the hands of the president, his loyalists, and they would be installed throughout, as we said, the federal bureaucracy using Schedule F. It's an incredibly authoritarian, very terrifying, real possibility that we would be setting the Republican president up as a dictator. And I want to be very sure that every American understands the seriousness of this threat. And I also want to be very clear that this is not going to happen with the Democrats. They are not suggesting such a thing. They're the ones trying to protect our voting rights and protect the rule of law. They're the ones out here respecting people's differences and their actual freedoms. This horrible plan only comes to fruition if we elect Republicans. And I want to be really clear about that. This is not a both sides thing. You cannot spin this both ways. There is only one group of people who are suggesting this, and that is associated with the Republican Party. So listen. This is horrifying. How can it be prevented? You said you're still feeling hopeful, right? Obviously, the most straightforward way to prevent Project 2025 from being implemented would be for Democrats to win outright in 2024. So what else have we got? Yeah, so I mean, that's that's the most straightforward way, right? Because you're right. You can't both sides this. This is not, you know, one part. This is not equal sides party doing this. And although Republicans and Trump, try, they're trying to muddy the waters by calling Biden, a fascist or destroyer of democracy in, in the wildest form of projection I've ever seen, ever. Um, it's, there's no both sides to this. Democrats are not doing this. You can have your differences with democratic policies, but they are, are not, they are actively trying to protect these civil service protections. So one thing that Biden did after Project 2025 was released to the public, uh, via EO, he tried to implement rules or has implemented rules that will essentially make it a little, I mean, it just delays it if Trump were to try to, to implement Schedule F. It could still happen. It just delays the timeline. And Democrats are also trying to push legislation. But guess what? Republicans have blocked it. So <laughs> civil service, yeah, they haven't. <laughs> surprise. Shocker. Uh, <laughs> so the civil service protections are not um, being codified right now. So really, I don't know how uh, maybe the problem solvers bipartisan caucus comes to their senses. There's really, I don't think they, they would pass some legislation to protect the civil service um, rules, which I think is one of the most damaging parts of this plan because what Republicans call the deep state is really just career average bureaucrats. Americans, career bureaucrats who are experts in their fields, who are just implementing services and providing government services to the people. And Republicans replacing that is really going to allow Trump to enact his will uh, with, with no pushback. So that would be really the only way. But honestly, I just got to echo what you said, Democrats. It's just, this is not a partisan thing. This is a pro-democracy thing. This is, if you believe in the American experiment, if you believe in the rights that we have, if you, you know, I know it's easy for, you know, with disinformation proliferating to potentially see both sides have their issues or, or, or whatever. This is really, and I'm not a hyperbolic person, you know, I, I, it took me a while to say even certain things, but like, this is actual fascism that they're promising here. And I know it sounds insane to say, but it's true. And Trump literally is saying it and he's joking about it, try to be tongue in cheek, but he's not really joking. What he's trying to do is normalize the rhetoric so that when people throw around accusations that he's being a dictator or a fascist, it doesn't land as hard. But the truth is this is happening. And the only way to stop it is to elect Democrats. And I'm not saying that as a Democrat, I'm saying that as someone who believes in America and is optimistic that we will reject him as these plans are more publicized. In the last uh, you know, few months, especially at the end of 2023, we saw a lot of news orgs publicizing these plans. We saw The Atlantic, we saw these op-eds. Some of them were too fatalist, in my opinion. You know, he's not inevitable. But I will say it was incredible to see that. This is getting the press it deserves. And I think as more Americans learn of this, I am predicting right now that I think he's not going to win. That's, that's my personal prediction. But I'm, I've been an eternal optimist and I thought Clinton was going to win too. So we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, I, I am not an optimist, but I'm also not a pessimist. I really feel like if we work hard enough, 
he can't win. And I think that that's what it comes down to. It comes down to how much work we're willing to put in because a fair amount of Project 2025 can be implemented via executive order, right? Like it can be done just by the president alone. And the president of the Heritage Foundation himself has acknowledged that a Republican president would need the House and the Senate to properly accomplish all of their goals. So it's absolutely essential that these people don't win. Uh, they certainly can't win the presidency, but we also need to pay attention to the House and the Senate too, because the president can do a lot of damage by himself, but if they get the House and the Senate, we are absolutely done as a country. I think keeping the House and the Senate can hold off some of the 2025 goals, but it'll still completely change how the government functions because of Schedule F and because of uh, focusing the major cabinet positions around the president's um, will and yeah. desire. And it'll change who is a civil servant, how our media works, how our businesses work, and how the Justice Department works. I mean, that alone will make America unrecognizable. I mean, as you said, after people started talking about it, um, mostly in October 2023, and when the details of the project really became public, President Biden immediately made a rule change via executive order that would make it more difficult to implement Schedule F so that it would protect a lot of these employees' jobs. Um, but that really can be overturned by another president because an executive order is only an executive order of the current sitting president. I think it's a really great reminder that there were a lot of unsung heroes in the Trump presidency, unnamed career civil servants, simply just upholding the law. You know, just regular government workers pointing out that the things he was trying to do weren't legal. And again, as you were saying, that's that's not political. That's constitutional, right? And Trump and the Project 2025 people, they want those people gone, right? They want you to be loyal and do what you're told. Law be damned. And if you don't feel like that, then you are out. We need to be really clear to the American people that the power that be who wrote Project 2025, they already have lists of people in place to take these jobs. They are already training them. They have training videos. They have sections of things. They have people in there. It, it's literally like, I think you called it Republican LinkedIn. Like it is an insane group of people of mega loyalists who, by the way, might not have any idea how to do the job they're being hired to do, but will be given the position because they'll be doing what they're told. So you think the government's inefficient now? I mean, imagine replacing it with people who, who, you know, replacing people who have been doing their job for years with people who have no idea what they're doing simply because they're loyalists. And I, I don't think I need to tell people that would be a disaster, not just for the constitution and democracy, but just for the efficiency of the government services with, that we count on every day, right? I know someone who went in there and I've heard from some people there. I don't, when I don't have any, you know, concrete reporting I want to, I'd want to put out, but I do have someone who's gone through some of the application process and the interview process, and they are screening for ideology. They are essentially making sure that these people are not only loyalists, but they're, they're smart. So they're not just saying, hey, wave a MAGA flag. Like, they want serious people. They don't want fools. They don't want Giuliani's, right? They're looking for uh, Bill Barr at his, at his, you know, at his prime. They're looking at for people when they were, they have a smart person who is going to defend the president by any means necessary. They're looking at the White House counsel role specifically as well of trying to make sure that they have someone there that will weaponize the law to, to Trump's liking and essentially be able to write these executive orders in a way where the challenges won't be as easy to, you know, it's not like Steve Bannon written Muslim ban. You just she shut it down that day because it's like, what is this? What joke of a EO is this? These are these are going to be serious people, and um, you're right. Uh, the only way to do it is to elect a Democrat, which is is Joe Biden. And if you can disagree with him on various policy issues, but I promise you, he is not going to uh, jail his enemies. Um, you know, he's not involved with the DOJ stuff. That's a special counsel. There is no evidence that he's involved in that at all. Trump committed crimes he's getting prosecuted at the state level, which also has nothing to do with Biden. No, he has no plan to do that. The Democrats have never suggested any plan to do that. And I think it's really important that we tell people that a vote for anyone other than a Democrat, be it a third party, no labels, RFK Jr., is a vote for the Republicans and Project 2025. The Democrats are the only viable party standing between us and this horrifying Christian theocratic dictatorship with like Donald Trump in charge. Plus, no sex 
on TV or in, <laughs> yeah, in yeah. your bedroom if yeah. you don't want to be a parent, I guess. Yeah, not only will it be authoritarian, it will be no fun. I mean, no fun so. at all. Uh, <laughs> Now, listen, it's very clearly a war on democracy, a war on America, a war on the rule of law, a war on the will of the people. It's fundamentally anti-American. And every single one of us, no matter our political party, should be standing up against it because the Republican Party is lost to us. That is not the Republican Party that a fair amount of Americans have believed in and known and voted for their entire life. This is a completely different party. They've given up on American democracy and the rule of law, and they are planning an authoritarian dictatorship with Christian fascist overtones. And everyone in their right mind should be outraged. I I could not agree more. I think anyone who sees this, and I think we have been seeing more of this lately, which is is encouraging to me, needs to be mobilized by this. I think we need the pro-democracy coalition that mobilized behind Biden in 2020 to re-coalesce here, to recognize this threat. I think most Americans are decent. I think most Americans understand that our freedoms are, are, are not just immortalized. I think they, they've seen, we saw with our own eyes, how close we can come to the cusp of democracy falling with that insurrection. And, that, and what will come will make that insurrection look like it was child's play, because they're not going to do it with just violence, which they potentially could do with Trump uh, planning to in, invoke the Insurrection Act on day one. Yeah, on um, that on that dictator day, on that dictator yeah, day. On on yeah, on the one, the twenty four hour dictatorship. He plans to mobilize the military against the American people. Then they're going to move methodically and legally, and then they're going to, you know, what they're mad about right now, like you said earlier, is that Trump is saying the quiet part out loud. They want they want to just do it in quiet. They want to move back to the days of the Southern strategy, where you you say your racist dog whistles, you don't make too much noise. But right now they're making noise. We need to believe them. We need to listen to them. We need to get together. It's not, this is not partisan. We have people from, you know, Rick Wilson. We have never Trumpers here. We have everyone, people, I have people who are diehard conservatives, never voted for a Republican their whole, or Democrat their whole life until Biden. This is the coalition that will, I personally believe, move, especially uh, after potential convictions come in, in 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 the spring with the trial in March. I'm hopeful. I think we'll mobilize. I think Americans need to be outraged by these plans and these blatantly authoritarian promises being spread out in the open. And I think uh, hopefully we'll gather together and make sure that we have our freedom still after 2025. And we're not just living in uh, Mike Johnson's vision of America. Yeah. I mean, the question is, do you want to live in a functioning government or not? Do you want to live in a democracy or not? Do you believe that government fulfills a role that you can't get anywhere else? And how would you feel if those roles were gone? Who would regulate our airways, our airplanes, our food, our medicine? Do you want to live in a world where those things aren't regulated, where they're just corporate profit? Because that's what we're being offered. I mean, and even if these heritage people and their 70 plus partners in crime don't get this all with the next election, these people are actively training this army of warriors for the long-term right-wing agenda, and they are good at long-term. The architect of this project has talked openly about the plans for the movement, and it's very clear that he's talking three or four presidential elections down the line. They are looking to kill what we have as a country. And we need to understand that if we want to live in a civil society, a civil society requires rules. It requires regulations and laws and guardrails, the things we have right now that are shaky because of the Trump years. These people are saying there will be no rules except for the rules they want, and we will conform to their version of society or we will be punished. And we need to be very clear that that is the plan, right? We have to remember that Project 2025 people are literally preparing to take over the country. And they're putting everything in place so that if they win the election, it all changes overnight. So if people think they're getting a fair election or a fair government after that, they are sorely mistaken. As you said, there is not a single dictator who works for one day, right? Putin had elections in Russia and he took over and now they have 
elections, and I'm using the term with air quotes, but they're elections Putin can't lose. Orban took over the courts and the press in Hungary, and now he can't lose. Erdogan did lose his election in Turkey, but he ran the winner out of town, rounded up journalists, killed protesters, and he's still in power. The people of Israel tried to get rid of their criminal Netanyahu, and he fandangled himself into regaining power. Hamas was elected, but they stopped having elections in 2006. Xi Jinping is a dictator for life. The list of dictators and people that want to live like this in an authoritarian world only continues to grow, which is why we have to defeat any wannabe dictator or authoritarian regime in this country before it's too late. We open the door to these people. We can never get it closed. Our system is already not fair with the Electoral College, the Senate, the power structure, the gerrymandering, the voter suppression, but these people will supersize it so we can never turn it back. And we have to make sure that never, never happens. Preach, preach, <laughs> preach, God, preach, just preach. Got a rant. I'm so sorry. I love Ugh. rants. I, my, my former company was called Rant for a reason. I love rants. Yes. Preach. Also, I just have to say, on that note, you're so right. It's a globally collaborative movement. Yes. Orban, Victor Orban was hosted by the Heritage Foundation in DC in December. He was the keynote um, speaker at CPAC. Yeah. They and had it doing, they, in Hungary. In Hungary. Exactly. Yeah. On December, the week of December 11th, Orban is in D.C. doing a closed-door meeting with, with Republicans as Zelensky was hosted by President Biden. This is a globally collaborative, right-wing authoritarian movement, and it's a battle for between systems, between democratic systems and authoritarian systems. That's what this is about. And I, I will just say, I think history speaks for itself. Authoritarian and fascist Systems do not end well. Uh, look at Mussolini. Look at Hitler. How's it going for Putin right now? It doesn't go well. And the, 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 the freedoms will be eroded over time. It doesn't happen in the blink of an eye. I think with Project 2025, they're trying to make it so it happens pretty quick. But for the average American, it might start to trickle in over time. And you'll live in more of a Russia-like situation like, like you're alluding to. I'm glad you brought that up because it's not just going to immediately be the th you know, the Third Reich, right? Like it's going to be something where it's a hybrid system that then suddenly you're having less free elections. And then before you know it, are you having any? Exactly. I want to thank you for joining us today, Ahmed. Please tell people how they can follow your work moving forward. Uh, the best way to, you know, follow my work would be to subscribe to my newsletter. You can just go to AhmedBaba.news or um, Google me, Ahmed Baba. Also follow me on social media. I'm on threads. I am personally trying to make the transition off of, uh, trying to make the exodus off of X right now. So you could still follow me there, maybe if I'm there, but I'm trying to get off there uh, just because of the horrible things Musk is doing there. But you can find me on social media. You can read my newsletter at AhmedBaba.news, or you could also read my columns um, on The Independent. If you, you just Google my name, uh, tap the journalist option. There's a Timbuktu scholar also on my Google page. He's a cool guy, but he's not me. Just click the journalist tab and you'll see all my work. Well, thanks for coming. Honestly, as you said, our freedoms aren't promised to us. We're going to have to work to keep them. And, uh, and you're going to keep doing your work to help us know what we need to keep. So thank you so much and Happy New Year. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Happy New Year to you too. This, this was a pleasure. Thank you. So that was Ahmed Baba reminding us that Project 2025 is horrifying, but not inevitable. What we have to do is take it seriously and continue to talk about it, to let everyone know what these people want to do, what kind of America the architects of this travesty truly want and how prepared they are to make it happen. This is a planned government takeover by people who want to rule over us with their laws, their rules and their morality. And we must unify against this threat to make sure it never comes to pass. Not now, not ever. I want to thank Ahmed for joining us today and you for caring enough about democracy to be here. Now go and tell people about Project 2025. Until next week, PG out. The Politics Girl podcast is written and performed by me, Lee McGowan, in partnership with the Midas Media Network and produced and edited by Happy Warrior Entertainment. All rights reserved.